I'm James Knott and this is Ask James, where you leave your questions in the comment section and I use those questions to create the next episode. There were so many great questions last week, it was really hard to choose. And your homework assignment for this week? Leave me a question about animals. How cute. You can think about it while you watch this week's show. Last week, I asked for questions with numbers. Hog the Herd wrote, How many mediocre beers does it take to equal the worth of one really good beer? You will rarely ever hear me distinguish between good beers and mediocre beers. Now, producing the Better Beer Authority, I have stumbled across many beers that I think taste great. But you'll never hear me rag on someone for drinking Bud Light. It's not in my nature. However, if you do, knock some sense into me. But lightly, I'm fragile. I have a personal philosophy that the best beer in the world is the one that is in my hand. I don't necessarily like to make the beer the focal point of my activities. For me, it serves as a compliment to a fascinating conversation or a reward at the finish line of a great adventure. Beer is that thing that I like to do when I'm done doing what I like to do. So while I get excited about sipping a blackout stout with friends, I can be just as happy drinking a Corona on a beach in Mexico. These experiences are very different, but they are both good. Every beer has its moment. The exception, Rogue Bacon Maple Ale. There is no moment for that. It is awful. It makes me want to wash my mouth out with dish soap and scrub it till I bleed with a Brillo pad. Chris G writes, what is your preferred interpretation of quantum mechanics? Full disclosure, I am not an expert on quantum mechanics, which is probably why you tuned in. But one thing I do know is the uncertainty principle, which goes like this. When I try to talk about quantum mechanics, I am full of uncertainty. Jcomp21 writes, if you could only drink beer with one ABV for the rest of your life, what ABV would you choose? I'm going with 6.5%. I think it's a good combination of flavorful and sessionable. He goes on to say, how many of those beers does it honestly take to get you drunk? Usually, it only takes one beer before I black out and wake up naked in the local park with lipstick smeared all over my face. Although, that could be because chef drops roofies in my pint glass. Deechmaster, how many fish shows have you been to? That's simple. I've been to 23 times 4 minus 92. Performances. Another way to put it, 0.49 rounded to the nearest whole number. Andrew Cletus writes, Why is it that the hair on my head and face grows and grows, requiring frequent haircuts and shaving, but my pubes seem to reach a maximum length of 2 and 3 quarters inches with no grooming? 2 and 3 fourths inches? That's a pretty precise measurement. However, I find it much better to express pubic hair length in light years. My strand length, when fully uncurled, is currently 7.38 times 10 to the negative 18th, light years. I just think that's so much easier to visualize it that way. But for you, with that amount of undergrowth, my main concern is that Mr. Happy is tall enough to lift his head above the bushes. And if he isn't, this probably isn't the right forum to admit that in. Back to the question. While hair on our head grows for four to eight years before it stops growing and falls out, our pubic hair grows at a slower rate for only one to six months before falling out. So basically, it just doesn't get as long before it dies. But why is our tuft of curly pubic hair so important? It has to do with evolution and passing on important traits. Now listen up folks, because this is complicated. Due to the shape of hair follicles, Straight hair has a smooth, round cross-section, while curly hair, aka, you know, the down below hair, has a rough rectangular cross-section that causes friction when scraped across a surface. It was very important for cavemen to have strong teeth, to eat well, live long, and pass on their genes. How do you keep your teeth strong? By cleaning them. Basically, the cavemen looked down yonder and saw a big curly bundle of dental floss. Leave your questions in the comments section.